All right, we're gonna to continue to look at solving limits algebraically. Um, so here's a little bit different one. It has a square root in it, but the process is still the same. My first thing would be is to try and plug in um, zero for t, okay? I would check my denominator. If I plug in zero for t, um, I would have zero squared, which is zero, so I have zero in my denominator. So that poses an issue. Now this one we can't factor. We don't have a polynomial on the top and the polynomial on the bottom. So then the next thing is, and it should be a red flag, or kind of a flag to you, every time you guys see those radicals, you're gonna go ahead and multiply what, by what we call the conjugate. Um, last year, you guys did this with imaginary numbers. So if I had like one plus i in the denominator, and we said you couldn't have i's in the denominator, you'd multiply by the conjugate of it. So everything stays the same except for the sign in between changes. So you'd multiply by one minus i. And that was what allowed you to get rid of the imaginary numbers. Okay, it's also very similar to if you guys did two plus the square root of x. Um, in order to get that out of the denominator, you would multiply by two plus, sorry, two minus the sign in between, minus the square root of x, top and bottom. So we're gonna do that here, um, but it's a little bit more complicated of a radical, but it's, it's gonna work out just fine. Okay, so whenever you see this, you're gonna multiply by the conjugate, um, and the conjugate is always the part that has, you're gonna multiply by the conjugate of the part with the radical. Okay, so we're gonna times it by. Um, this is the piece, and here is the sign in between. So we change it to the opposite sign. So this radical stays the same, and then we do plus three. And we're gonna multiply that to the top and the bottom. Now in the process of simplifying this, you guys, the bottom piece don't actually distribute. Um, we only want to multiply out the conjugate piece, okay? But we are using the conjugate here, okay? So let's multiply this out. I'm not plugging in zero yet, so I still need to write the limit. Okay, so we got t approaches zero. Um, and then I would multiply, okay? The square root of the same thing underneath it times the square of the same thing will just be what is underneath there. Then I would have, ah, my arrow didn't go very well. There we go. Um, plus three times square root of t squared plus nine. And then now I distribute my negative three. So minus three square root of t squared plus nine. And then finally we'd have negative three times three, so minus nine. All over, don't multiply out this part, only multiply out the denominator, or only multiply out the conjugate, sorry. Now, whenever you guys multiply out the conjugate, you'll start to see this pattern. So you can probably skip to the simplified part. Um, the middle terms from foiling, they'll always cancel each other out. Okay. So what I will be left with is t squared plus 9 minus 9. Well, that's nice. My 9s will cancel out. And so now I'm left with the limit as t approaches 0 of t squared all over t squared square root of t squared plus 9 plus three. All right, so I did my simplifying and then I always recommend plugging in what you got. So if I do that, I plug in zero for t, I'd have zero squared which is zero and zero times whatever this is will still be zero. So bummer, it doesn't work. Then you just see, can I simplify it further? And yes, you can. You would see that these t squareds would cancel. Now just remember there's a placeholder of one in the numerator, okay? So my limit as t approaches zero, one over, square root of t squared plus nine plus three. And now I would try and plug in zero. You guys, I'm gonna plug in zero so I don't need to write the limit sign. So I'd have one over the square root of zero squared plus nine plus three. So I'd have one over, this is really square root of nine, so I'd have three plus three, which is six. So I get one sixth. Okay. So that is how you solve um, limits that involve a radical. You're gonna need to use the conjugate. Okay, um, and that's how you handle it. And you guys don't only multiply out the conjugate piece. Okay, the other part, um, typically something like this will happen. Something will cancel. Okay, so that's why you don't distribute it out. Otherwise, you have to refactor. So only multiply out your conjugate and kind of simplify it from there. Um, but radicals should be a huge hint to you that you're going to use the conjugate. Radicals are pal equals use the conjugate. Okay, that is example.